you don't have to do video. I did video because I found a lot of benefit from doing video and it accomplished some of the goals that I wanted was not to go out and chase people. I wanted people to meet me halfway or, you know, seek me out. So I think, um, you know, you have to decide like, hey, if it's videos for you, then great. If videos not for you, then don't do it, right? But um, do the benefits of doing video outweigh, uh, you know, everything else? For me, it was that was like a no-brainer, right? But it could be different for everybody's, everybody else. I just wanted to create a better business for myself that it was easier, and I accomplished that through video, and I know that it works. Welcome back, everyone. Today, we have Chris Kwan, full-time dad, husband, and real estate agent who's been in the business since 2012. He's a journeyman who's had the opportunity to work at six different real estate brokerages and is currently using video as his primary medium to share his journey. Yeah, and, 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 and exactly that, an online resume. So your bio, your about section, all these different things, all this different text, it, it only gets you so far. If you were able to just do a two to three minute video as well uh, with your bio, like you said, not only are your potential clients seeing it, but potential agents as well. And actually not a lot of agents do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, when you're referring clients back and forth, it's obviously great to look at reviews. It's great to see that they're uh, active in selling some properties, but to take that next step to say, okay, let's watch the video of who is Chris Kwan. Then they go, wow, I feel like I know the guy already. Mm -hmm. Then, well, that's a much easier referral. Uh, and if there's not a referral to be given at that point, uh, later on in the future, should that arise, they think of you. They mm -hmm. don't think of, let me see, you know, I read his bio and he said he did this, 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 this. They just instantly think of you because they saw you through video. Sure. For somebody that's doing video um, and they're putting out video, what are some of the uh, things that you're doing to to track and, and measure? What are the different things that you're looking at? Are you specifically looking at views? Are you looking at uh, comments or shares? What is it that you're looking at the most? So I'm actually kind of stepping away from just the specifics of each analytic. Okay. And I'm trying to look at it and it's kind of stepping back a little bit and looking at the entire picture. And what I mean by that is that, uh, so like, let's say I put out an ad on Facebook or like a post on Facebook, you know, there's a view count. You know, if I boost it, we're like, what am I seeing there? How many people are clicking? Those are like specific analytics that people look at and maybe uh, only look at, right? And then they go, oh, it only got two clicks or it got three clicks and only got 500 views. But then beyond that, like, okay, like two months from now, like how did that affect me? Like, what about all the other people that aren't liking commenting? Like, how did that, did that post actually get me business? And I think there are a lot of people out there who don't like or comment or say anything about your stuff, but know that you're doing business. And so those are Even if you're not doing business, if you put that out there as if you're doing business, yeah. that perception <laughs> can definitely change for sure a and lot. I, there's, there's that thing where you, uh, in the industry, you fake it till you make it. I got no problem with that because, you know, you got to start from somewhere. As long as you're good at your craft, you're getting better. I got no problem with that because, you know, obviously you're doing what you can in order to get the business. Uh, so, but if you see a lot of people, a lot of people do start off that way, right? They maybe have only like two, three, four sales in their bell or maybe three or four years in the business or whatever. And, but online, they look like they're doing a ton of business. And so, well, that will, that will transpire into more business. And then three or four years from now, you'll be the, the expert, right? You'll never, never remember where you were three years ago, but you got to start somewhere. So are you looking at views the most? Is that, is I'm it? looking at the whole thing. Like I, I've never been a person to just sit and stare at one thing. I'm always like, oh, I had this analogy about this uh, the other day. Somebody was uh, talking to me. I said something like along the lines, like, um, if you had like a dam or something, I forget what it was. If you had a dam and there was obviously water going into the dam, I didn't want to know how much water was going into the dam. If I just knew that, I don't even know. I can't remember how it, how it went. <laughs> yeah, no, that was terrible. But no, I, I think what it was for me is like, I just want to know that the, the, the stream is moving in the right direction. And I hear what you're saying you know because, I mean? you know, there's been a, a lot of times the agents come and they say, well, you're doing this, you're doing that. How many leads did you get, you know, from this specific video? How many leads so messaged you? How many? That's and that is actually impossible. That's so hard to do. Because you you don't know, okay, was it 
the 20 seconds from that video and the 10 seconds from this now video that actually got them to think they know me. So when they got the postcard, they, they knew me and then they worked with me. Well, how do I really track that back to this and this? And I think that, like you said, it's too hard to track specifically, okay, the amount of leads to X video, unless you're running a, a video ad, you know, with the uh, objective of, of lead generation, I guess you can definitely track that. Um, I think it really just comes back to using a fish analogy. The more bait that you put out into the ocean, the more opportunities you have to catch a fish. Right. So I, you know, when I started doing Facebook ads, I was very focused on the leads that came in, right? So you run a Facebook ad, okay, how many people contacted you? How many people signed up? How many put their information down? And I was very stuck on, okay, how many leads did I, that $10 boost or that $20 boost get me? And over time, you know, I was thinking like, hey man, I only got like two leads from that one ad and I only got two. And I didn't really think about the long-term of it, right? So obviously your goal is to get the information, obviously somebody to put a footprint or a, you know, on on that that you put out, right? So obviously you do the the Facebook marketing and you understand it. So when somebody, you know, obviously likes, that's that's their that's their footprint, right? There's it's basically their thumbprint on on that, and you can retarget them, right? So that's you know tactically if you wanted to use that. But if you do that ad after ad after ad after ad, and you do have the right things in place in terms of social media marketing, and you retarget them over time, like whether that that lead is dead at that point could be something that works out six months from now or a year from now. And so um, I just think you got to think long-term. Well, I think what you have to do is think, how can this value, how can this video create value? Uh, and it, and it's much more than just uh, specifically to a listing. And that's why, you know, when you're talking about the community, when you're talking about your brand, when you're talking about the different people that you work with, the, the different events that you go to, you know, you allow somebody to interpret that the way that it fits into their story. And it's not necessarily that everybody on social media is buying or selling a house because we know that is not the case or uh, we'd all be very well off uh, very instantly. Mm -hmm. And I think for anybody that's listening that thinks, oh, I have just, you know, I have X amount of Facebook friends. I'm going to do great in real estate. Mm -hmm. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. But I I do think that if you can uh, create value and actually give the value out through video, um, then again, it, it, it can apply to multiple industries. It can apply to uh, multiple types of backgrounds because they not only see you as the video person, but hey, I actually learned something or I actually learned a specific tactic or tip or hey, you know, they talked about mindset and I didn't even know what that meant, but they just said that and I just went and I read this book and well, actually, you know, that kind of came back to you and they think about that later on down mm-hmm. the road, which can you track that? Not really. <laughs> It's so hard to, to be like, oh, this ad produced 10 sales, right? I don't think that's that's possible. I think you obviously you do your numbers at the end of the year and then you obviously understand how many ads you put out and then you could track it kind of that way, but it would take a year for you to, to really do that or maybe a three-year, you know. Um, so you talked about having a plan for video. Um, do you have a specific plan around the video as far as how much video you want to do, um, what types of videos that you want to do? Can you... Talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, for every listing, obviously, I do every single. Video. That's a that's a um, non negotiable, right? So every listing that I have, I'm making a video. Every buyer sell that I have, I'm making a somewhat of a video. I can't really make a video like a property video, but I can make some social media pieces for it, and you know, so you know, put it out that way. So I made that rule probably about two years ago, right? So um, every single listing, it's got to have a video. And so regardless of whatever type of video it is, I just need to make sure that it's consistently out there. Just like if I were to go print a property flyer, it's just a non-negotiable thing. Like I need to go get a property flyer and then I also have to have a video. Like it's, it's, so that's a rule that I've had and I'll I'll continue to have uh, for a lot of folks. And, you know, I don't know if that's necessarily the case, right? So they make one video and they go, okay, cool. I made one video. You got to make more than one video. And then how can you turn that one opportunity? So the thing that I'm working on with my coach right now is how do I get uh, one listing and turn that into three or four transactions, right? So same thing with video. Like if I'm making one video, if that's my, that's my number one rule, how can I turn that into three or four pieces, right? Three or four different marketing pieces. 
Obviously, that video could be something you could use at an end end of the year piece. You can do it every quarter, um, you know, every two two months or whatever. But um, repurpose your content, you know, for for those folks. Let's say you only got one listing, right? Make four videos out of it. You know, just shoot different parts of the house. But uh, so that's something that works that that I've been working on in terms of video for me, and then creating your social media marketing pieces, right? So, um, and then. There's no magic. There's no magic pill. I think you just need to be solid. Like you just need to have some type of rule and stick with it. Um, I think everyone's trying to make their their videos fun, and I think that's cool. But I think you have to be just consistent. You just have to be solid with whatever your plan is, and you need to set rules for yourself. If it's going to be one video per listing, great. If it's going to be two, great. But um, get it out there. And so. For me, I don't think I do anything crazy. I just naturally think of, oh, I can, how can I make this thing interesting? And, you know, so every video is a little bit different. It's more of a creative process for me as opposed to anything. But I would say those are my number one rules. Just to And you said that there's no magic pill. Do you mean there's no magic camera? There's no magic resource no. tool? No. Um, I mean, there's stuff, there's definitely stuff that I go and buy. Okay. Because every new gadget that comes out, I'm like, oh, cool. I could use that for this <laughs> or for that. And I... I have a bunch of equipment at home that I don't necessarily use. I always tend to go back to the things that are the smallest, the most easiest to use, the easiest that can things that can just fit in my backpack, um, easier to travel with. And for me, that's simplifying has been the easiest thing for me. But my, I use my phone quite a bit. A lot of people have phones. I mean, the phones these days are so good. So use that if you're starting off. Um, then maybe you know you you have a GoPro here. You've got the ADD. You've got probably an A7 III or something. These are all good quality cameras, but really, you, all you really need is one. Yeah. If you think about it. And honestly, if I think I got rid of all my cameras and just started using one, I think that would make, I would probably shoot more video. I, I probably would, just because I wouldn't have to think about what camera am I using today? What lens am I going to use? Um, you know, what mic should I put on this? What tripod should I, that's all like crap that I, that I have to deal with that most people I'm sure deal with in other ways, shape or form. But. Yeah, that's for me because I, I got the Sony um, and then I went shark diving. So I bought the uh, GoPro 7 yeah. and then, you know, going on other family trips, I'm taking the Sony. And then I'm like, eh, it was a lot nicer to just carry the yeah, GoPro. Small. So then yeah. next I'm just carrying the GoPro, just carrying the GoPro. And then pretty much for every personal video over the last few months have just been through the GoPro or yes. my phone. Why? I don't want to worry about the camera and the tripod and the lights and this. I actually want to spend time with my family mm -hmm. and capture the moments in pretty much close to the same quality. There's tons of different things that you could do. But like you said, if you just keep it simple, then you do it. And if you do it, then it can lead to other things when you're creating video. Right. Um, so what's a, a piece of advice for somebody that already has been doing video there are a hundred videos in like you recommended. Um, they're not necessarily tracking something because they understand that there's a much bigger picture. However, there are a hundred videos in and they're not really seeing any traction anywhere. What, 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 what would you say to that person? I'd be surprised. Oh, okay. Okay. I'd I like surprised. the answer. I'd be surprised if somebody didn't see some traction from that. So probably they haven't created a hundred videos is what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be, that'd be really dip. It'd be all based. If they created a hundred videos, then the question would be how you're distributing your content. Okay. Are you doing it? Are you optimizing it? Are you putting it in the places that you need to? When you say optimize, is there something specific that you would yeah, say they you should be doing? Get, obviously you want to have some knowledge of, of how the algorithms work in different platforms. You know, the best times to post what content people like, you do have to be aware of the analytics. You don't, I, for me, I don't have to get down to the specifics of each post, but you do have to be aware, okay, I got this many likes or this many posts and you see a difference, right? I know that I get more likes and more attention on things that are family oriented that don't have anything to do with real estate than vice versa. So, um, you know, the thing that, you know, I, that I talked with, with Jason Pantana was like, how, how do you incorporate both to where, you know, you can incorporate your personal life and you can, you know, sprinkle in a little bit of your business in there and still get the pretty good, pretty good attention on it. So I'd be surprised if somebody were a hundred videos in and they were comfortable in the camera and, you know, they've been doing this for a couple of years and, and didn't see any, any traction from it. I'd be very, very surprised um, because 
there are tons of people that are doing video right now that have put up that are in exact situation that are completely different personalities that put out qual- different types of quality, like your Christoph Chu to your to your uh, Tim Macy's to me to we'll have all different styles. But I can tell you, we all have probably several hundred videos out there, and on some degree, we're all very successful, and we've gotten a lot of a lot of business from that those opportunities. But we're all very different. Right, we all attract different people. Right, we're all different personalities. So, um, is that the secret sauce? I'd, I'd be until proven otherwise. I think that is. So, if anybody has recorded a hundred videos and that's listening, and you haven't seen anything, I'd love you for you to shoot us me. shoot us yeah. a, a message. I'd love for you to be that person <laughs> so we can dissect it and go, "What the heck happened?" <laughs> right, but I, I'd be very surprised if if that wasn't working. Then it's just a matter of like, okay. How are you putting out the content? Who you, like? How do you how do you get it in front of the right people, right? Because somebody's gonna like you out there. There's too many people out there not for, for somebody not to to like you. So, um, yeah, I'd be very surprised. We kind of just jumped into talking about video, um, and there may be some people that don't know who you are. And for those people that are listening, uh, could you briefly tell us uh, who Chris Kwan is? Yeah, I'm just a normal real guy. I mean, I, somebody asked me the other day and they asked me, can you send me a two to three sentence bio? And I was like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> like, I go, I go to my Zillow Describe page. I'm like, okay, how can, I, how can I copy and paste this? <laughs> or where can I go and find something that's already been printed about me? So I can, and I was just like, I'm just a normal guy who just, when I look at, uh, cause I like making video, obviously through the conversation that we have, I like making video and for me, it's just the way I look at video is I'm just sharing my perspective of the world through the camera. That's it. Like everybody's perspective is different. And I just use the medium for me is, uh, you know, a video camera. Other people, it could be, you know, a pencil, it could be crayons, it could be, you know, through Photoshop or whatever it might be. My medium is just using the camera and video. And so the way that I want to, that I perceive the world, I just want to make sure that, that I show people like, Hey, this is who I am. And so I'm just a normal guy. Um, you know, I got two kids, I got a wife. Um, I've got great friends. I've got great family. Um, you know, I've had good things and I've had bad things happen to me. Um, I'm no one special. I'm not super rich. I'm not super poor. I've worked to get where I'm at. I'm a hard worker. Um, and I'm, I enjoy just the simple things in life now. I like spending time with my family. Um, I don't party like I used to in college, just no need to. Um, and I just like being simple, right? Just, I'm, I like ice cream. I like sweets. What's like your favorite, fa- favorite flavor? <clears throat> I like them all. That's a problem. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll eat any, like if it's ice cream, I'll like, oh, give it, send it over my way, you know, I, whatever it is. And so, um, and so for me, like, I'm just a real estate agent who just found a niche, I guess you can say. And every day I'm just kind of working to try and get better, to make my life a little bit easier. Um, I don't want to be a real estate agent forever. Like, I don't see myself doing this when I'm 50 or 60. I want, this is like, this is like a, a this is just a place for me to just hang out for a little while and then I'm going to go find the next thing. And so I'm using real estate as kind of a vehicle to help me figure out what that next thing is. I don't know what it is, but, um, while I'm doing it, I just want to be as good as I can be and then move on to to the next thing, whatever it is. So maybe, who knows, maybe I'll still be in real estate, but I I won't be selling like I am now. I may have a team. I may be running something different, but it won't be my main source of income or the thing that I do every single day. So I figure if I'm going to be here and work as hard as I can, uh, while I'm here and then so for somebody that's listening uh, and they just popped on 40 minutes in, they haven't heard you talk about uh, anything prior uh, when it comes to video. They don't know who you are, uh, but they're seeing a headline that says the best piece of advice uh, that you would give to somebody regarding video. Uh, what would be the best piece of advice that you would give to somebody in the video spectrum? Um, I say this with everything. Um, in terms of company, real estate, coaching, life in general, you just need to put yourself in the best environment that you can put yourself in. And that could, so when I look at the company, right, that's this wonderful company that we belong to, 
<clears throat> I looked at all my options and I figured out what's the best place that I can be that will that will help me get to whatever goal that I want, right? Who can I surround myself with that are like-minded, um, that has the same vision as I do, right? And so that for me was the reason why I came to this particular company, um, coaching, right? So we were we were coaching before. I'm still coaching now. And, you know, when I wasn't coaching, I was like, you know, kind of doing everything on my own. And I was like, how can I be surrounded by other people that are doing amazing things so that they can influence me to do some something amazing. And so same thing with, you know, friends and family. You know, I understand I've, you know, I've met a lot of people in my lifetime and there are certain people that that I definitely want to be around, right? They're just good people. Just want to surround myself with the best people possible. Um, and there's some people that don't necessarily, that aren't on the right path that I go, well, you know, maybe I need to sacrifice that relationship a little bit or step away from it in order to, to, to be in that environment that I want to be in. And so in every single aspect of that, I, I look in and go, how can I put myself in the best position possible? So when it comes with video, I think it's the same thing. I think you need to be surrounded by people that, um, that are, that are doing video and that can push you to be there, right? Whether it's through, uh, if you're just an online person, put yourself in some groups, get very associated with that group, get to know the people that are in there and, you know, ask questions, have them, pe have people push you to do, to reach your goals. Um, it was funny. I went to uh, a video YouTube video conference uh, a couple of years ago, and that was kind of around the time where, you know, you know, you know, YouTubers they have their their camera in front of their face. It was crazy walking around. Everybody <laughs> had a vlogging camera in front of their face. It was just so normal. After two days of that, like if I was walking through like the hotel. And I had a camera in front of my face. I felt like I fit in. Like I was, it was just a very normal process. Whereas when you go out and you go into the shopping center and you're the only <laughs> person with that camera in your face, it feels really weird. So that's why I think it's so important to be surrounded by other people that that are uh, that are you know similar to what you want to accomplish or people that you want to be around because it'll influence you. Totally influence influence you. There's going to be a lot of questions, I'm sure, uh, regarding video, regarding other things that we discussed how can people best find you and reach out to you should they have a question directly for you yeah um i think the best way for me uh to get in touch with me is uh through instagram obviously with the instagram platform it's so easy um and uh chris kwan realtor c-h-r-i-s k-w-o-n realtor um is my handle that's probably the best way to reach me um facebook has become i just it's, it's been tough to get a hold of me but i think instagram is probably the easiest way too and um you know, that's how I got a hold of you. Yeah, that's, that's how you got a hold of me. When I was downstairs trying to trying to call you, I was like, "Dang, I don't even have his number. <laughs> so how, do, how do I get in touch with him? Oh, I'm going to message him on Instagram." Yeah, there you go. Sweet. So uh, I I definitely want to uh, thank you for your time. Uh, like you said, video is something that can definitely put you in a place that you want to be that you're not currently. Uh, however, it's not going to be uh, an overnight thing. You have to think about it in the long term. You have to not just solely focus on some specific stat or uh, analytic. You have to really look at the big picture. And, you know, if you keep overthinking it and overthinking not only just the analytics, the, the camera, the tools, the resources, the way you look, you're just never going to do it. So really at the, at the heart of this, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, if somebody hasn't created a video, the easiest way to do that would be to pull out their phone and hit record, uh, and that's their first video. Is there anything else for somebody listening that you would give as a last piece of advice to somebody that um, they're either doing video, they're, they're thinking about doing video, they're on the edge, uh, and they're waiting to hear this last piece of advice? Um, so... No, and it's and it's it's not a trick question. It should literally be back to just do the video or, hey, you know, I I asked Kyle the question yesterday about building a team, and I asked it the exact same way, and he said, look, there's phenomenal teams out there. However, building a team is not for everybody, and if you're only doing it because you think you're going to be like this person or you want to be like that person, but you would hate you know, building a team, don't build a team. Yeah. You know, there's tons of other models that you can do. Would you say that's the same thing 
when it comes to video? I would say so. You don't, I don't think you, you don't have to do video. I did video because I found a lot of benefit from doing video and it accomplished some of the goals that I wanted was not to go out and chase people. I wanted people to meet me halfway or, you know, seek me out. <clears throat> so I think, um, you know, you have to decide like, hey, if it's videos for you, then great. If videos not for you, then don't do it, right? But um, do the benefits of doing video outweigh, uh, you know, everything else? For me, it was that was like a no-brainer, right? But it could be different for everybody's, everybody else. I just wanted to create a better business for myself that it was easier, and I accomplished that through video, and I know that it works. So, yeah. Sweet. Well, we appreciate your time. Again, Chris Kwan, connect with him, Chris Kwan Realtor. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best way to get a hold of him is definitely through uh, Instagram direct yeah. messages because yeah. that's exactly what I did. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, cool. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins Official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.